Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I wanted to show you how I made this really fun spinner card. And to make this even more fun, we're going to be using a brand new set of images from Art Impressions. This is called the Little Boy Front and Back Set. And you can see that you get the front of the little boy as well as the back. And these will line up perfectly when we go to create our spinner card. Now I'm to do my coloring today, I'm using the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens. These are a water-based marker, and I'm starting off with the dark oatmeal. To do my blending, I'm using the Zig Blender Pen. But you could also use a water brush here to do your blending. Now in this new series, there's also a little girl front and back. And I did a video on that last week, so if you want to check that out, I will put a link for that down below. And I'll also put the link on my blog. So again, it's a little girl. She's so cute. She's got a little apron on, and she's got a little bonnet. And for that card, I did a swing card. So if you've never created one of those, you might want to check that out. It's really fun. When you swing the card open, you can see the back of her outfit as well as the front. And as part of this series, there was also front and back fence and window set. And those were designed so that when you have the little boy or the little girl, either in front of the window or in front of the fence, you can see the back side of them as well. So in the swing card, you'll see how that works. And I'll be using all of those dies in that particular card. Today we're creating a spinner, spinner card, so we're not going to be using the fence or the window from that set, but we are going to be using a fence from the watercolor collection, and I'll show you that here shortly. So I've switched over to the deep red to do the little shirt, and again I'm just using that blender and adding a few shadows here and there. And if you get too much ink, you can always just scribble that onto your scrap paper. So if you have a little too much, just remove some of it from your image and scribble it onto the scrap paper. You can see I'm doing that there. And do be careful with the reds. The reds can tend to bleed a little bit. So you may even want to heat set in between using the red and your other colors. Um, sometimes that's a good idea with, with the red the red tones. So here I'm adding a few shadows there, and I did the same thing for the other side of the sleeve. Now for the face, I'm using sugared almond pink on the cheeks and the flesh color on the rest of his face. I'll be using that on his hands as well. And what makes this little guy perfect for a front and back card, again, is the front and the back are symmetrical. When you use your dies, it does come with the front and back dies, you will, they will line up perfectly. So when you're creating a spinner card, you're always, I'm always digging through my stash trying to find images that will, when I stamp it, it will line up perfectly on both sides. So in this case, with the little boy and the little girl, you don't even have to worry about that. You know that it's going to line up perfectly. For his hair, I switched to yellow and beige. I like to lay down the yellow first. I add a little bit of that beige just to create some shadows in the hair. You can see I'm creating a few little shadows there on the back. And then I'm just kind of pulling it up and leaving the top of his head the lightest. Now I will switch to the green gray. And the colors I'm using are to coordinate with some papers, some pattern papers that I've selected. I'll be showing you that shortly, but there are some really pretty, we're going to be using a polka dot paper, a really pretty kind of olive green for the grass. And so, and then kind of a burnished, burnt orange for the background for the sky. So I'll continue coloring with that green gray. And I'm just adding a few shadows here and then I'll pull that up towards the top. I 
I decided to add a few more shadows there. I did have a little bit of a problem with that red bleeding, so I probably should have done the heat setting that I recommended to you. Um, again, sometimes you do get a little bit of that with the red, especially the darker reds. Here I'll just finish up the pants, just adding a few shadows up underneath that hat and along the inside of the pants. So here you can see a closer look at the finished coloring. Now here's that pattern paper I was talking about. And these are double-sided papers. And I've selected these three. We're not going to be using the back sides, but I did want to show you that. This is from the Photo Play Thankful Collection. Again, this is a six by six paper pack. And it, it is it was designed for fall, but I think it's perfect for this little boy, this little country scene that we're creating. So I've grabbed the patterned polka dot paper. I've grabbed the largest die from my Art Impressions rectangle double stitch dies. Now I'm grabbing that second largest die and I'm going to cut out that burnt orange color. So you can see that has that pretty stitch border all the way around. Let's create the card base. This measures four and a quarter by eight and a half and I'm scoring it at four and a quarter. So this will be a standard A2 size card. So now that first panel is going to fit right on the front of this card, but we need to die cut the opening. So I've got some post-it tape. This is just a temporary tape. I'm going to place that panel on the front of the card. I've opened up the card, so I've got it flat. I'm going to tape that panel in place so that we can cut that opening out. Now I'm going to cut through both layers at the same time, but I'll show you a little trick here in a minute if, that, if it doesn't completely cut through for you. Now I've also got a brand new set of dies, the nested oval dies. And I'm grabbing the one that I thought fit best with the, the little boy that we're using. I don't want it to be too big, but I also want to have enough room for him to spin around. So I'm centering this on my card and I'm going to temporarily tape that down with some post-it tape. I am moving the tape. I want very little of it on my pattern paper just in case I get any adhesive sticking there. Um, I won't get too much. So now I'm going to run both layers through the die cutting machine. I've got my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine and I'll go ahead and run this through. I'm just going to back that up and make sure that I cut through both pieces of cardstock and you can see that I easily cut through. Now if you didn't cut through, let me show you really quickly. What you would want to do is take off that top layer. If that wasn't cut completely through, it would leave some marks there. You can lock that die right back into place and run it through again and then you'll die cut through both pieces. So now you can see how this will come together, that pretty yellow orange color in the background. Let's create some grass. Now again I want to make sure I don't interfere with him spinning around. So I've got that pretty olive pattern paper. I've got that largest die. We're going to create a little grassy border for the front of the card. So I just want that grass to peek up over the top of that oval just very, very slightly. Now we will create some grass for the inside of the card and that will come up a little bit higher. So it won't look like he's just floating in air. It will look like he's standing in the grass. So first let's cut this piece. I'm just double checking it there again and I'm going to run that through. That'll give me the stitch border on three sides. And now let's create that grassy border that we need for him to stand on. So I'm going to take the Lawn Fawn grassy border die. I'll tape that down with a little bit of post-it tape and I'll run that through the die cutting machine. And again, I'm just checking to make sure I have enough room so his little feet don't get stuck when he's spinning around. So I've got my Sizzix Sidekick machine. I can go ahead and run that through. 
And as I said before, we will create a second grassy border for the inside. So that, that's about where that grass is going to come to on the front of the card. Now I've got the watercolor fence dies. And I'm going to die cut a few different designs. I've got that little gate and then I've got the, the long piece of fence. So I'll cut two of those longer fence pieces. I don't end up using that gate, but I wasn't sure at this point what I was going to be doing with the card. So I die cut those three pieces and we can set those aside. So going back to that pretty olive pattern paper, I'm going to die cut the grass for the inside of the card now. So now again, I'm using that second largest rectangle. That is going to match up with that pretty burnt orange paper that we have for the inside. So I'll tape that down. I'll run that through the die cutting machine. I've got that on a little bit of an angle so that it's really easy to run it through. Then we'll die cut our grassy border. And now you can see how that grass will pop up over the top of that oval on the inside of the card. So it will look like he's standing on some grass. So I've got these little pieces of fence and here's where I thought I was going to want that little gate, but I did end up changing my mind on that. So I'll set that little piece aside and I'll use these two longer pieces. I'm going to just snip off those little ends so that I can line these up right next to each other. And then I'll tuck that in behind the grass. So I've got my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. Just again, checking for the placement on that. And then I can go ahead and glue this down. I'm just marking that with a pencil so that I know where to line that back up. And then let's glue down this other piece and I'll overlap those two right in the center. And then I can just cut away any excess. I'm just fluffing up the grass, the little uh, blades of grass there a little bit with my fingers, and then I'll pop that right into place. So let's go ahead and put this on the inside of the card. I'm going to center that on the inside. And with the glue, that gives you a little time to move that around if you need to. So now you can see the inside of the card. Going back to the grassy borders, we can go ahead and attach these pieces together. Again, I'm just going to fluff up that grass just a little bit. We'll line this up right on the bottom, of the front of this polka dot paper. Now, before we attach that, we need to create the little mechanism for our spinner card. So I've got the little boy. I'm going to take some quarter inch double sided tape. This is the lawn fawn tape. It's a super strong tape. I'm placing that right down the center of the little boy. Now I'll remove the backing from that tape and I've got that piece of clear thread. I just got this at my local fabric store and I'm just going to cut a piece that's plenty long enough here to go uh, inside that opening and I've got some extra just to make sure I have enough. So I cut maybe about 12 inches. Now I'm placing that thread right down the center on that tape and then I'm adding a little bit of glue around the edges just to make sure that this is securely attached to the, the front of the little boy. Now what I want to do is place another strip of that tape over top of the tape we already put down just to sandwich that clear thread right in between. And then I'll remove the backing and I can place the front of the little boy on top and you'll see that these line up perfectly. 
So that is what is so fun about these images. So now you can see we've got our little spinner piece. Now let's go ahead and attach this to the card. So it's going to sit right in the center of that oval. So I'll need some tape at the top of the oval and at the bottom of the oval. And that is to secure that clear thread. Now I can remove the backing from the tape. Now I can line up that little boy. Again, I want to center that on the center of that oval. And then when I place that thread down, I want to pull it a little bit taut. You want to make sure that it's, it's not flopping around in there. You want to pull on that, not too tight, but you want to make sure that it's nice and secure there. So once I know that it's straight, I'm going to tape that down. Now I can just cut away any of that excess clear thread. And you can see that's going to create that little spinner. Now I'm placing tape all around the edges so that we can glue that polka dot paper on the front. I'm going to place some additional tape over top of that clear thread just again to make sure that it's nice and secure. So that's what I'm doing there, just placing some tape right over the top of that thread. And then I'll just add a little glue just to make sure these little areas don't pop up. You could certainly use tape here as well. Just thought it'd be easier to pop a little bit of glue in there. And now I'll remove the backing from all of this tape and I can place that front panel on the card. You do wanna take a minute here to line that up. You are using the tape, so you don't get a lot of chances to get that lined up properly. So take your time there. Make sure you get it lined up nice and straight. Now I've got that sticky mat in my Misty stamp positioner. I do want to stamp the sentiment on this card. So I'm going to go ahead and place this in the Misty. I did remove that mat, but off camera, I put that mat back in. It wasn't quite raised up enough in order to get my stamping to come out properly. So you could also just place a couple pieces of cardstock behind your card to make sure that it's positioned so that you can get a nice clear stamping. I've got this stamp set here. This is from Art Impression and it's called the Mr. Set. And uh, it's got all these cute little sentiments. And I thought this one was just perfect. It says catch you on the flip side. So that is perfect for our little spinner card. Now for ink, I'm using the Versafine Vintage Sepia ink. And this is a permanent ink. This is a really pretty dark brown color. I'll stamp that a couple of times so that I get a nice clear stamping. And now I want to stamp a sentiment on the inside. I put a little bit of temporary tape there just to hold that shut while I was doing my stamping. And I'm just using my adhesive eraser to remove that. Now we can open up that card and place it right on that sticky mat. And those sticky mats come in a three pack and they are from My Sweet Petunia, the people that make the uh, Misty Stamp Positioner. Now I've got the Baby Critters set from Art Impressions. And I'm searching here for a birthday sentiment for the inside of the card. I wasn't quite sure. I don't want it to show through from the front of the card. So I'm checking here and that happy birthday is a little bit big. It would work if I slid it over to the right hand side a little bit, but I really didn't like it over there. So I decided to grab that one that says big birthday wishes going to stamp that in the center. You could stamp it at the top as long as it doesn't show or at the bottom. I'm going to go with the bottom since that's what I did on the front of the card. And then I'll use that same ink and do my stamping. And I did stamp this a couple of times as well just to get a nice crisp stamping. Now I've got the Art Impression Cats mini dies. These are so cute. And I've got the that brown paper that was on the back of that polka dotted paper. And I'm going to die cut that little cat. 
And then for ink, I'm using the Antique Linen and the Black Soot. These are the Distress Oxide inks from Tim Holtz. And I've got my little sponge daubers here to do some coloring. I just thought this little cat would be so cute in the background. It looked a little plain to me, so I thought I would put the cat on that little fence. So I'm adding some black shadows around the top side here of the cat. And then I'll use that antique linen on the little tummy area. And I'll just kind of blend that out as best I can. Now I can go ahead and pop that on the inside of the card. And I'll have that showing through that window. So you can see the little cat sitting on top of that fence. And I just thought that just brought everything together. Just looks so cute. So now I'm just making sure that I've got that glued down properly. And now I'm going to use the enamel dots from Cartabella. That collection is the Welcome Fall collection. And I'm just going to place three of these down at the bottom of the card near the sentiment. And now let's take a closer look at our finished spinner card. So what you want to do is just wind it up. I usually do it about a dozen times. And then I'll show you that when it once it's in the envelope, you've already wound it up. You slide it in the envelope. And when the recipient opens the card, that little guy will spin around. So you could wind it up as many times as you want. You can see I added a few of those little enamel dots down at the bottom there. And then that's what the inside of the card will look like. So again, let's go ahead and wind that up. And then when the recipient opens it, he's going to spin around. So this is really fun, super fun and easy to do. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you were inspired to give this a try. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.